I'm going to be focusing here on what I'm referring to as a kind of quick sketch. It becomes apparent to me that, um, you know, for students, for people kind of learning this process, learning to kind of metabolize and understand these ideas, that while the sort of longer protracted projects that we sort of spend a lot of time and, uh, and energy and focus on um, are really helpful and really useful, really probably necessary, that there is something in between that as well. For a student who is kind of figuring out uh, how things are going to work in the world of drawing, in the language of drawing, um, it's necessary to have a tool that allows you to quickly take bites out of the visual world, uh, understand and internalize them. And so we need a tool that allows us to do that, right? If it takes us always 12, 16 hours to make a drawing, then we have only that window of time in which we can understand things. So I want to focus on drawings right now that are a lot faster, a lot more rapid. And what that's going to mean from a process perspective is that we're going to be taking stages of the drawing that have up until this point been uh, quite disparate, right? We're going to be closing the gaps in between those stages. If you want to picture like one of these kind of five stage um, development instructional drawings, right? How each stage is kind of distinct and different one from the other and they kind of lead this kind of linear progression from start to finish. Um, we're just going to be taking the gaps in that uh, and pushing them together. And we're also going to be taking stages and kind of overlapping them, right? So while that linear block-in stage is still going to be deeply important, we're going to infuse that with more information a lot more rapidly. Something that I focus on in the other courses that I do uh, is a lot about uh, what to select and what to edit. And while the importance of those ideas have not diminished here, I think that the parameters by which we evaluate that information have changed a little bit. Where previously uh, I might have thought that the linear stage should be acting a little bit independently to the stage of initial planes of values, if I need to be making the discoveries that I would normally take three hours to make in 30 minutes, I need to combine those two moments. Consider that the more information that you have on the paper, the more that you have to kind of compare to nature. I do have a little bit of a sense in this moment of um, the composition that I'm intent upon making eventually. So I have this kind of large sheet of paper and there's going to be probably three heads on it eventually. So kind of three portraits. And that's definitely kind of a slight part of my thinking kind of walking into this is that, yeah, eventually I have a plan to, um, to kind of put together a few, a few separate head studies into um, a kind of a larger, I don't know, kind of like mood board almost for, uh, for this subject. And um, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, when I'm placing this one, I, I put it into a place that's kind of interesting for, um, uh, for the future of this, uh, this project. In a way, like I just wanted to kind of capture what, you know, several studies all together kind of look like when you're kind of working them, yeah, in terms of a composition, but also, you know, just something kind of pleasing to look at so that you can, um, or so that I can rather, like just uh, practice that particular element, right? You know, composition is something that, you know, I feel like we all maybe talk about it a little bit, but it's not, um, it's not something we tend to, I think, like practice a lot on a, on a larger scale. Maybe that's something that maybe requires a little bit more infrastructure in terms of um, uh, really considering what it takes to, to make a kind of large composition.
think about roundness uh, as in a sphere, it is a kind of generic roundness. It kind of turns without any punctuation in that turn. What I want on this face is a series of faceted turns. I want to understand each opportunity and place where a plane is shifting and turning, just like I am uh, along the top plane of the lower eyelid, the bottom plane of the lower eyelid, the roundness of some of the passages of form just below the eye socket, the faceted turn of the zygomatic bone. Um, each one of these areas has the kind of interest and the kind of sense of structure in it that I want to discover. Even to the extent that I'm looking at the hair and asking the question, what is, what is the top plane? What is the apex of the light on the hair versus the kind of secondary plane versus the plane of shadow? Um, all of these passages, all of these parts uh, should have a sense of form, even to the extent that I'm looking at you know, the, uh, the neck, which is fully in shadow and wondering how can I express a little bit the sense of form that's happening there. The second idea that I'm looking at is is there a solid idea of light and shadow being produced? And that's something that I'm pushing a little bit further into now by kind of punctuating some of these um, uh, edges of, uh, of the forms around the lips, for instance, and below the lower lip um, in order to kind of conceal a little bit the, um, the, the kind of planes which are hidden from light away from the kind of planes within the light shape that flow just a little bit more easily into each other. Um, I'm also looking at really just a sense of cohesion in between all of these kind of passages of the drawing. Am I finding places where um, there is too much rendering in one place and not enough in another? Um, I'm looking at the sense of composition in terms of what is the shape that I've created. These are just ideas that I'm, that I'm juggling, that I'm playing with, that I'm working with now while I kind of allow my, my pencil to kind of flow through the drawing and kind of discover different shapes and different interactions that maybe I didn't see at the onset, but now I'm kind of gaining a much deeper and kind of resonant relationship with. Um, so it's a very rewarding moment in the drawing. I'm also thinking about how do I clarify the features that I want to clarify? Um, so looking at the eyes, I've probably pushed those a little bit further than some other areas. Um, I think I want to move next actually to the nose and analyze the really kind of subtle plane shifts that happen in there um, and the transitions and forms that are occurring um, just so that I have a really kind of believable sense that uh, these eyes and this nose live in the same world of definition. Um, after that, I actually am feeling a bit ambitious to get into his ears. Um, especially this one that's in shadow, I find that there's some really fascinating structures inside of there that I want to see if I can communicate via the little bit of kind of reflected light that's kind of coming into this uh, left-hand side of the face. Some wonderful shapes that are happening there that I think I can kind of bring some uh, sense of like structural life into um, that's actually going to create uh, a little bit more of a sense of interest than I normally would in an area like that. But Again, it's just my curiosity about the, the shapes and construction in that area that are kind of drawing my attention to it. Something I'm very wary of in this moment is how tightly I hold on to certain shapes. Um, and what this is really is, for me at least, kind of establishing a kind of ceiling in terms of the, uh, the rendering that I want to make in the, in the drawing. So um, let's say, for instance, that looking at the forehead, I start to communicate uh, some very even, very soft and very smooth transitions from the highest key light into the shadow. What happens then, as I resolve more and more of that transition, is that it actually demands a greater degree of resolution everywhere. So I've, in a way, pushed the scale right, of rendering further up. And so everything else, if I want it to be kind of harmonious, has to continue along with it. Now, from the onset, it was never my goal for this drawing to um, express a very broad degree of kind of resolution. I wanted it to be explorative. I wanted it to be adventure. I wanted it to be just a journey into this pose and into this model's expression. And if I start to communicate other things through that, um, I've changed my priorities a little bit. That's not always a bad thing, but I am being careful because for me in this, in this instance, 
I don't want to push it into some other world of definition. I want to keep this drawing in an explorative state. I want to keep it rough. I want the possibility to have unresolved areas and, and slightly more resolved areas. Um, and if I grab too tightly around some of these shapes, or I l allow the rendering to get a little bit too smooth in a particular area, I'm going to wind up kind of fighting myself a little bit process-wise. Um, and I'm not going to have that freedom to kind of look at an area like this and allow my pencil to kind of flow through it and hatch across different planes in a way that is uh, calculated, sure, but also a little bit.